Okay, YouTubers. So what I have here is a 18 volt single source Black & Decker battery. Um, this is used for a rechargeable pole saw that I got probably about five, six years ago. And I went to the store because this one's dead and was surprised to see that they wanted $49 for a battery. I found one for $39 at one of those big box stores. And I think you can get it for like $37 online or something if you really look. But to me that was insane. So I've heard about this hack and I'm going to try it. What it is, is I went to Harbor Freight and got their Drill Master 18 volt NICAB battery which was part item number 68413. Okay, and this has a little less milliamp hours than this battery. They did sell a little better one um, for a few dollars more. I think this was like 11 bucks and then I had a coupon to get 20% off. So it's like $10 roughly compared to 39. And so what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to take these apart. I've already took this one apart and you can see that the inside of the battery is here and they actually mark um, with positive and negative with their wire colors and I don't know if you can make that out there's a little B right there. What you'll need to take this apart with is a Phillips head screwdriver nothing simple there this little safety latch has a spring it's going to pop out at you it went in that area there and then that's done this battery can come out. I just got to unsolder the wires from the top. This you'll need a Torx bit, a number 10, and there are six screws on here. There's one there, which I still left in, one there, one up under here underneath this sticker if you still have it, another one underneath that sticker if you still have it, and one there, and one there. When this comes apart, this also has a little trigger latch right here. The thing is, they do not mark which is positive, which is negative. If your battery still has a little bit of a charge, you can use a voltmeter and modern digital voltmeters. If you hook the leads up incorrectly, it still reads voltage. It just says negative, and that will tell you if it's positive or ne which side's positive and negative. So if you have positive this one, negative that one, you're reading negative voltage. It's the opposite way. This one, unfortunately, is completely dead. And on the inside, it's both white wires, and they do not differentiate which side is which. Um, a little hunting around the internet, it appears that this side is positive. Um, so I'm going to try that out. If it doesn't work, I'll be able to take it back apart and unsolder it. So we'll take a little look inside and see what we got to take out my last screw right here. Of course, that's the wrong size torque. Number 10. And try and keep all your screws. You don't need those. As you can see, the top cover comes off. No problem. And then there's this area here, which is the little safety lock, and there's a spring that all slides down in here. Now, this battery, the whole unit, comes out of the case because everything is soldered on the top here. And from my understanding, this is positive. And this one that goes underneath is negative. And this goes underneath and has an insulator right about here to keep this all from contacting. What I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to cut this piece off that goes underneath and just solder the wire up to the top here so that I do not have this problem grounding out because this battery is slightly different. So what I'm going to do probably first off is I'm going to try and desolder this. And I have some soldering wire here. I've been letting my soldering iron get nice and warm and it's probably not warm enough yet. It almost looks like it's been fused on. I don't even think that's soldered. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to cut this wire because more looking at it, it looks like it's been actually fused to the uh, battery pack right there to the actual terminal. So I'm going to take my little dikes and cut this off. I have already checked this and made sure that this thing had no voltage in it. It was stone dead. All right. Let's cut this right here. And then we'll bring that to there. Okay. 
not the way to probably do this. <clears throat> wow, that's a lot tougher than it looks. So. There we go. Okay. Use my dikes. I'm going to cut this off because this has to sit on the battery. And I've heard that they've, people have, get this over and see it. I've heard that people have um, had problems with this cover coming out and arcing or something. So, next, what we're going to do is desolder. I already desoldered my positive wire. Now I'm going to desolder the negative. And just take the soldering iron and heat up the solder. It may take a few minutes here. Not the best solder in the world. There we go. That is done. This is probably where having a pair of second little helping hands would help. I do have some solder here. This out. Anything that would help here to our advantage. Okay. Let that cool pretty good there. So I've already soldered my negative lead on, which I believe is the negative there. And we're going to heat up the positive side here and add a little bit of solder to it. I am not the world's best solder at all. As you know, if you guys watch some of my other videos, I like to play with cars. That's one reason why if I did a mega squirt conversion, I would buy the pre-assembled one because my soldering is horrible actually got a friend he wants to build one himself and uh, I think that's really cool just not for me Soldering is uh, definitely a when I did do it in school there was uh, basically no way I could get one with like a passing grade because uh, the guy he would check all the way back in the wire in there and make sure you don't burn the wire which 99.999% uh, people do of course, he had been doing that for like 30 years, so when we go to show you, he could do that easily. Okay, so this is in the Harbor Freight case, and if you notice, the cases are actually like a different size. If you can see that, this is the um, Black & Decker one, but, and so when I seen that, I was a little scared, I was a little skeptical, but the battery does slide right in. I've had this battery out for as you can see, it's not all glued together. It's just sitting there. And we'll put this back in there. And boom, it fits. Life is amazing. So, that is in there. We'll have to line this up a little bit. And this is in the um, Black & Decker case. Put my little spring in there, because you don't want to forget that. 
put my little uh, thingamajigger here. Uh, maybe something I'm going to have to play with right there is this little uh, slit. For my spring. There. go. Now, this goes up in a little slot right in here. There's actually two little guides. So this goes up there. Try and get the wires not to be too tangled up here. And this goes in a slot. And I've heard that uh, took a little bit of finagling to get this all together and there's the reason why because the positive wire wants to go right on top of this little stud now of course how life is the uh, center piece is moved If I can get this gouged in here a little better. Take another little screwdriver. I'm going to push this down a little farther. There we go. There we go. That's on there. Let's get our screws. I did not check to see if these were any different links. I think they're all the same links as far as these screws go. So This battery does not have a full charge either, by the way. I just lost a screw. That's all right. Oh, there it is. And I have the saw out back, so we will test to see if it works. And then after that, I'll probably put it on the charger and charge it all the way up. Before that, I may take the voltmeter and put on here and make sure that I'm getting voltage out my problems. And if it doesn't work, I have to pay 40 bucks and buy a battery. Horrible. That's what's amazing. They don't make these tools anymore. They've switched over to the lithium ion and they've gone up to 20 volts. But I did remember when I bought the saw that I could have bought the Weed Whacker, which came for two with two batteries for about 80 bucks. I think it was like 75 or something that was on sale. And I thought to myself, a smart guy would do that buy that and so I'd have extra batteries for the saw. Okay, I have my uh, voltmeter on. This one doesn't like to stand up. That should be power negative 19.1 volts. Negative 19.1 volts when you switch. Alright, so that should work. We'll go outside and see if it does. Install the battery. Set trigger. It works. And now the chain has jumped off track. So, there we go. Cheap and easy way to get a Black & Decker battery back to operational. Um, of course, it's an unapproved way. You know? But it's just a little way to show that there are some ways around things. Now, to fix my salt. Alright, so hopefully you all had a good time seeing the uh, little battery hack. And like I said, that was for 
Black & Decker 18 volt single source power supply battery. So hopefully you all have a good time. If you liked any of the videos please subscribe and uh, go check out some other ones or maybe something else you like. Alright, bye and have a good day.